welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with an extra and very special fountain pen video. My top three fountain pens. Thank you so much to Yoast Applebaum for inviting me to be part of the top three pen series on his store's YouTube channel. And thanks to my family for the letter writing campaign that had Yoast send out cease and desist notices until he finally relented and let me do this. I'm teasing, of course. But being part of the series is quite an honor and it means you really like me. And I can't deny the fact that you like me right now. <laughs> you love me. You really love me. I'm excited to share with you my top three fountain pens. Give me a break. I couldn't be more excited, I must say. This anticipation, it's making me mental. It's very difficult to select three out of so many wonderful pens. So I'm going to cheat a little and include two runner-ups in the list. I've been writing with fountain pens as long as I've been playing the guitar, 51 years, so literally in the womb. <laughs> However, there was quite a hiatus between high school and retirement, where my career as a professor of theater design and technology had me using drafting tools, technical pens, mechanical pencils, rather than fountain pens. I rediscovered writing with a fountain pen a couple of years ago when I searched for a gift for my best friend who is a lifelong fountain pen aficionado. Ron will figure prominently in my choice of top fountain pen as well. I was looking for a Christmas gift for him and went down the rabbit hole of inexpensive Chinese fountain pens that wrote beautifully. Since I already had a YouTube channel where I put up guitar related video, I tried my hand at a fountain pen review and the next thing I knew I was doing two reviews a week and had an avalanche of fountain pens. So out of this mountain of pens I'm going to select three favorites with two runners up. So. Let's get started and take a look at those pens right now. So my criteria for selecting my top three fountain pens has more to do with the story behind the pen than the actual pen itself. However, it couldn't be on the top of my list if it didn't write well, as the writing experience, the nib on paper and the feel of the pen in the hand is a big part of why we all love them so much. So I'm going to show you my top list of runners up to the number one in reverse order and tell you a little story about the pen and why it's so special to me while I show you the pen and show you a little writing. My second runner up has more to do with the entire brand than the individual pen as I have more of this brand of pen than any other and this pen BBS 456 Galaxy is the best of them. I couldn't do a video like this without extolling the virtues of what I consider the best value for the dollar of fountain pens on the market from Pen BBS. Not just the pen company, however, the fan community of this brand is one of the nicest, most supportive, and generous of the group of people that I've met in this hobby. This Pen BBS Galaxy 456 is a vacuum filler and has a very special mini food a nib that I've come to embrace as my favorite nib here in my favorite model and my favorite acrylic galaxy. Just look at that chatoyancy. It is just stunning. Can you believe this pen was only 50 bucks? I have over 25 pen BBS fountain pens. The variety and quality of their acrylics and the wide range of models available at affordable prices has me singing their praises as if I was being paid as a shill. Are you listening, Bai Ni Zheng? The first runner-up is on the list because this pen went from being a huge disappointment to becoming simply the best writing fountain pen in my collection. This is my Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Blue Hawaii with a custom ground architect italic nib. Look at that spaghetti resin. It's just amazing. You can see the Hawaiian ocean and the sand. It's uh, just amazing every time I write with it. This fountain pen created a few connections for me in the fountain pen community. It was the first pen I bought from Yoast Applebaum and solidified his store as a vendor of integrity and trust. I bought two nibs with the pen, a medium that was on the pen, and a broad as an extra. Unfortunately, neither of the nibs wrote out of the box, 
and I had failed to take advantage of Yoast's fabulous free service of checking and tuning the nib before shipping. So I wrote Yoast and asked his permission to try to get the nib working myself without losing the option of having them replaced. He immediately supported me. Terrific service. I got them writing, but they weren't great, and I looked for a local nibmeister. I found my new friend and fountain pen nib guru, Jack Hernandez, here in Calgary, and he not only ground this incredible architect italic for me from the broad nib, he invited me to the Calgary Pen Club, where I found a wealth of experience and knowledge and a bunch of new pen friends. Hi, Murray, and everyone else. Well, I see Shmuel and Trisha and Betty and Cheryl Ann and Alexandra, and of course I see you. This Leonardo is so incredible now that I went ahead and bought two more Leonardos. And speaking of Leonardo, that brings me to number three on my top three fountain pens list because it's another Leonardo. This stunning Leonardo Officina Italiana Furore Grande Smeraldo. Oh, only I didn't buy this one. It was gifted to me by the designer of the pen, Salvatore Matrone. To say I was stunned when Salvatore reached out to me to offer me replacements for the two Bach nibs that had failed me is a huge understatement. I was flabbergasted. He offered to replace those nibs with two new Yovo nibs as he was switching Leonardo over to Yovo from Bach. He also mentioned that he was sending me a gift along with the nibs. And this was the gift. And this was a challenge too. Of course, I was going to accept the gift. I'm not crazy. My mother had me tested. And I'm not insane. My mother had me tested. <laughs> But the challenge was to do an honest review of the pen and to be critical where I felt I needed to be critical in the face of such a generous gift. Fortunately, this is one of the best writing experiences I've ever had with a fountain pen. The nib is like butter. They like butter. And the pen in the hand is a joy for long, long writing sessions. I can't tell you how thankful I am to you, Salvatore, not just for this pen, but for the incredible writing instruments that you are making. I can't afford most of them, of course, but nudge, nudge, wink, wink. He asked him knowingly. Snap, snap, grin, grin, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. And on to the second pen on my top three list, my Pilot E95S with a 14 karat gold medium nib. This is my first gold nib fountain pen, and it was a Christmas gift from my lovely wife, Wynne. That alone would make the pen special, but I can't stop gushing about how wonderful this pen is for me. Not only is the nib a beautiful inlaid gold, but the pen goes from being compact in your shirt to being a full-sized fountain pen with the sleekest and sexiest capping and posting mechanism of any pen I've ever held. It is light and balanced and writes first time every time. It is constantly next to me on my desk, and I write with it at least once a week. Some gifts are special because they are given by someone you love, and you keep them near you because of the sentiment. Look at this tree blows and all the heat's going up. It's me, she swore, It's supposed to be cold. Uh, you see, I cook my heart out with that soup, and he's not eating it. No. It's a flop. No. Hey, look, look, if it make you feel better, I'll keep it over here by me. <laughs> this pen is special because I love the pen almost as much as the woman who gave it to me. And now for the number one pen on the list. This pen is revered in my collection because of how incredible the pen is and because of its story. This is my vintage 1970s Schaefer Targa with a 14 karat gold inlaid nib. Just look at this nib. When I think of my earliest conception of what a fountain pen is or was, the image of this kind of nib on paper is what comes to my mind. This is a fountain pen. Anyone who sees this pen immediately stops and says, what is that? What the hell is that? This pen belonged to my best friend Ron's late father, Dennis. Dennis was a lifelong fountain pen enthusiast, 
and had an excellent collection of pens. I knew and loved Dennis. He was a wonderful, wonderful man and is greatly missed. When I started doing these pen reviews, I was running out of pens to review very quickly. Ron opened his entire collection of pens to me, which contained all of Dennis's pens he had left to his son. That collection included vintage Parkers, Schaefer's, Visconti's, Tatia, Cross, and many others, and this Targa. I immediately set my sights on this Targa. It's a slim pen, but that nib, oh my god. Nice morning, too. Beasley, oh my god. Ron loaned me all the pens in the collection. I did some restoration work on Dennis's 1950s Parker 51 pen, pencil, and fountain pen set, as well as this Targa, which hadn't been used in over a decade. When I returned the pens to Ron, he handed this Targa back to me and asked me to keep it because Dennis would have loved for me to have it. It brings tears to my eyes even now. This pen was loved by Dennis, then by Ron, and now is adored by me, and I write with it as often as I can, and each time it brings me joy. And there you have it. Thanks go out to Yoast Applebaum for validating that I'm an official influencer. Okay, now, do you really need the Honorary Justice League of America membership card? <laughs> it's been in every wallet I've owned since I was five. And including me in this series that I've watched from the beginning. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.